In today's video, I'm going to share my underpainting process or my beginning stages of starting a new oil painting. I have done a video like this before in the past, but since I keep getting a lot of questions about my process and the products I use, I thought I'll make another video. Since my last video, my approach have slightly changed and will probably continue evolving going forward. But nonetheless, I wanted to make an updated video sharing more information on underpainting and specifically my process and why I have come to love the underpainting process that I have developed. So an underpainting is exactly what it says, it's the base layer of paint before starting the painting. It's a simple thing that can have major effects on the rest of your painting and a great way to unite your color values and to give your painting one cohesive look. An underpainting can serve many purposes. It can establish values, composition and perspectives. It can give your work more depth and dimension, creating more contrast and enhance light and dark areas. Reasons and techniques for painting and underpainting vary from artist to artist. Some use it as a blueprint to what they intend to paint. Some as a base layer for middle ground to not have to stare at a blank canvas. Others as a way to build contrast, tonal values, highlights and shadows. And a few others as an outline for future color placements. As a perfectionist, I like having my reference sketched out first, so I can concentrate on painting the values instead of getting the proportions right. But drawing was always so time consuming getting all the composition and perspective right, when all I wanted to do was paint. But this process made me fall in love with the starting of a new painting. I now enjoy the beginning stage a lot more than I used to and the depth and dimension on my final pieces have improved tremendously. So when starting with a brand new blank canvas, I prefer using charcoal. I draw very softly, starting with a few grid lines as my guide to draw my reference correctly. Then continuing to draw shapes like circles to get my positions in place. After this, I finish drawing my subject using my reference as a guide. The reason I prefer charcoal for this stage is because it is so forgiving when you make a mistake. You can easily remove or lighten the charcoal just by wiping your hand across the canvas. I also don't like seeing grid lines after drawing, so after getting my image drawn, I can easily wipe off the lines without any trouble. After drawing my sketch and having my proportions correct, I use black band pastel for the next step. This stuff is amazing. So the next step is adding my shadows, once again using my reference as a guide. I use this pan pastel applicator tool which looks like a palette knife but has a soft replaceable sponge with which you apply the pastel. The reason I love using this is because it doesn't smudge as easily as graphite or charcoal and keep your image intact even after applying acrylic paint. It also leaves a soft blended look even on the texture of the canvas. So I go over important lines to make sure I don't lose any parts of my image when applying the paint in the next step. I also believe the applicator tool helps a lot by pressing the pastel into the canvas. More loose powder sitting on the surface of the canvas will mean more pastel mixing in with the paint and make it look dirty. After adding my shadows I go back erasing some of the highlights where need be. A lot of the times it's not necessary but it can look nice in small areas maybe like fine hair or something. Now before moving on to the next step, it's important to know that you can use a fixative to spray your image to hold it together. However, I have never used a fixative, as of yet I don't own a fixative. This is why I love the pan pastel so much, because without spraying a fixative, I can do the next step without ruining or losing my image. The next step is applying a layer of transparent acrylic paint. You can use any transparent color. The reason for it to be transparent is that I still want to see my sketch underneath. My go-to color is Burnt Sienna from Windsor & Newton. More on that color in a minute. First, I quickly want to go over the process. I spray a little water over the canvas surface and spray water on my brush and on the paint. This is for two reasons. Keeping the surface a little wet helps to apply the acrylic paint smoother and less streaky. And for the next step of removing highlights using a paper towel, it is easier to lift the paint where need be if the paint is still wet. So spraying the surface with water keeps the acrylic wet for a little longer. 
The step of lifting the highlights usually needs to happen very quickly. The larger the size of the surface or the faster the surface dries, the more difficult it becomes to lift the highlights. Although the pan pastel is much less likely to smudge, the possibility of smearing still exists. To avoid this, I use the largest brush I have to apply the paint with. The quicker I can cover the surface with as minimum movement over the sketch as possible, the better. Obviously, the larger the canvas, the more challenging this gets. Not necessarily in any specific order, here are a few reasons why I paint the acrylic layer. Remember when I said I don't use any fixative over my sketch? Well, I use the acrylic layer to seal my sketch so the black pastel don't end up mixing with my oil paints and make them appear grey, muddy or dirty. Reason number two. Applying the acrylic layer is a way of priming the surface for me. I don't prefer using a specific brand of canvases. I like to experiment, so some brands can be a lot drier on the surface than others. And the dry canvas can absorb the oils inside the oil paint rather quickly, making the painting process quite frustrating. So applying the acrylic layer makes the surface a little smoother for the oil paints. Reason number three. It is so much more satisfying being able to see when and where you paint the color white. Reason number four. When the underpainting, specifically the right color, shines through to the final art piece, it can look amazing, bringing your values together into one cohesive look. Now the underpainting isn't always directly visible on the final artwork. It depends on the amount of layers and the thickness of the paint applied on top. So there are two ways that this acrylic underpainting can come through in my paintings. Sometimes I like to paint in such a way that I don't let my paint colors touch each other, leaving a small gap where the underpainting shines through on the very edges. And then sometimes it can have this undertone shining through some thin areas, like specifically the burnt henna color. It has this slight orange goldeny glow shining through some very thin areas. Now I specifically love burnt sienna which is a bit of an earthy warm orange. I use it a lot to paint apart from underpainting but it's my go-to color specifically for underpainting because of the warm tone. Some artists also like to use a complementary color of the overall painting shade for their underpainting. So for example, if it's a green landscape they'll paint a reddish underpainting to complement the artwork which can also leave the painting with a beautiful finish. But that's it for today, I hope this video answered some of the questions that you might have had on my process or the products that I use. Or maybe answered the question of what an underpainting is and what benefits it can bring to your final artwork.